So we have seen that a firewall rule actually matches traffic. It matches traffic that flows between the firewall different interfaces. And if it finds a match, if it finds a match, we have seen the different criteria. Those were the incoming interface, the outgoing interface, the destination, the service, scheduling, and so on. Then it does something either to allow the traffic or to deny it. And now we will look at what happens next. Now, a good, a good analogy is when you head over to an airport. Now, the first thing that you, or the first person that you meet is the security person that asks you so many questions. Where did you come from? Where are you heading? What is your destination? Did anyone brought you something to deliver? And so on and so on. That's the first step of a firewall rule. The next thing it does is sending you to a baggage check. Now, what happens at a baggage check? Well, they check your baggage. They check the payload itself, although everything seems okay and the traffic is getting approved and is destined towards its destination, no one really knows what you're hiding in that traffic. And that is the baggage check, and that is exactly what a security profile does. So moving on to security profiles, we if we click the uh, security profile menu, you will see that you have different security profiles that you can enable on your traffic. Now, once you create or use one of the default profiles, you can move to your policy and enable it on the traffic flow. You have a section that is called security profiles where you can actually enable or disable. And as you can see, once you click on it, you will see that you have different profiles to choose from. So here I have on my web filter profile, I have about a dozen different profiles that are enabled on my traffic. You do so since um, the profile needs to be custom made. It needs to be custom made to your network needs uh, your network topology, your network baseline, don't just use any security profiles. If you enable antivirus, you may use different databases. You may choose that you want to use a heuristic scan. So don't just use any security profile out there. Use them carefully. Use them uh, in a custom-made to your needs. Let's move over again. So we have an antivirus, we have web filter where you can actually monitor, uh, block, allow different URLs, different categories, enable safe search. You can log even uh, search keywords from all your users. Uh, you have a DNS filter where you can also block different domains even block accessing a botnet site, application control using a layer seven uh, uh, view on the different applications that you're using, either remote access, peer-to-peer, -peer, voice over IP, proxy applications, and so on. You will see that in just about any security profile, you have also the option to override specific applications or specific URLs uh, even if you block different categories. You can block applications that are uh, detected that they're not using their default ports, such as port 21 for FTP or any other known application ports. Intrusion prevention is probably one of the most uh, known engines, and that's one of the reasons that, that your 48 is a next-generation firewall 
it scans for two main things. It scans for exploits, that is vulnerabilities, and it also scans for anomalies. You can actually configure different sensors based on the target, either servers or clients based on severity, based on the uh, protocols, and based on the uh, vendors and the uh, vendors' applications. One of the known policies that you can use within your FortiGate is a denial of service policy, which relies heavily on your IPS engine. And here you can actually configure thresholds for different layer three and layer four traffic. That is um, protecting yourself from a SYN float, an ICMP float, or even from scanning your ports using tools such as Nmap or Nemesis. There are so many things that can be said on security profiles. I will only mention two other things that uh, I will not get into in this video, but you can see my channels. I believe that I have uh, several videos on that topic. The first one is the inspection mode. Your FortiGate supports two inspection modes. The first one is flow-based mode. The second one is a proxy-based mode. They make a difference when you choose one on the other. And the second thing is the inspection, is the certificates that uh, you actually use uh, different certificate options when scanning the traffic. You can use the basic certificate inspection, which will check only the different fields, validity of a certificate and so on. And you can also uh, choose deep inspection that will allow your FortiGate to inspect encrypted traffic. You can actually check your encrypted traffic uh, and see if it has viruses, malwares, intrusions, and so on. 